Hello, hello. It is heaven's heartbeat. We are live on a Sunday night because it is a holiday weekend and I've got a special oh. guest here. <laughs> hello, friends. We decided that we were going to hang out this weekend and then what better idea than to shoot heaven's heartbeat while we're together. Yes, yes. So we're excited to be here together. I know (laughs) when we're in person together, it makes things a whole lot easier. And we have a lot less technical difficulties since we are all here together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Trying to share. Oh, that's a good idea. This. So if you are watching right now, if you would do us a favor and just share this, we want to be able to get this into the hands of somebody who really needs to hear this. This particular message has been on our hearts for a couple of weeks, but we wanted to talk about it tonight. Um, So it's entitled, You Teach People How to Treat You. So what could this be about? (laughs) Well, we were thinking back to how did Jesus start this relationship that he had with us? How did this all begin? It began with the Bible, right? Yes. And like in the Bible, how did he, I guess, present himself um, and, and demonstrate how to start a friendship for us? He, wait, is this a trick question? No, (laughs) I'm like in the middle of sharing this on Facebook. I'm having a really hard time. Okay, wait, that was easy. I mean, he, he lived it. He lived by example. And so we see time and time again that Jesus had healthy relationships and that's Mm -hmm. what we're going for. And when we really look at the example he lived, his relationships had boundaries. Yes. Yes. There were boundaries. And people think that oftentimes when you're talking about boundaries, that you are only talking about the no and the putting up a wall, but that's not it at all. It's only just a small portion of it because boundaries need to be actually more like fences rather than walls. Oh, I like that. Yes. Like that has a swinging gate. Yeah. So people can come in. There is Mm -hmm. like a yes and a no, but like you can let people in and out. Mm Mm-hmm. That's really good. Yes. Because boundaries are not just the no, it's the yes to knowing when to say yes, knowing when to say no. And, um, and then Jesus himself demonstrates that first and foremost, he tells us that we can come to him at any time. So right there, he kind of has like an open gate policy for himself. And that's really amazing because we (laughs) need to be able to approach him pretty much. I approach him all the time. And so it's really amazing that he has set that boundary where like, come Mm -hmm. to me, give me your burdens. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the boundary he set for us, but that's not a boundary that we necessarily like, Mm -hmm. it's not really possible for us to take on the burdens of everyone, but that's, Mm -hmm. that's a boundary he's set in place because he knows what he's capable of. He's perfect. So he can have that open door policy, but we aren't. We're flawed individuals and we actually have to, in in order to set good boundaries for ourselves, we have to know ourselves enough to be able to set those boundaries, to know what we can and cannot handle. Yeah. And so it's perfectly okay for us to need to step away. Like Jesus did. He, he went away to pray. Like he knew that that was something that he needed to do. Yeah. And spend time with the father to refill. Mm-hmm. And he knew when he was getting like drained, if you will. And he mm-hmm. knew when he had to have that quiet time, which is so key. Mm-hmm. And so, and he did, he pulled away and he spent time with the three, you know, mm-hmm. like there were times when he was spending he, he was spending times with the multitudes. And then there were times when he had that quiet time with the, the close disciples that he walked with. Mm-hmm. So he knew the boundaries he had in place. He knew when he needed that time alone with mm-hmm. God. Um, and he healthily lived that out. He had a good balance where the Bible tells us that we are supposed to like give of ourselves to others, but there is a fine line and a boundary of giving of ourselves to help others and then enabling others. And we don't want to be enablers. So we are supposed to, when we are 
able to, when we know we are filled up enough, we are supposed to go and help others, but not to the point where they are not able to just do it for themselves. So that's very important. And it's very important, especially to you Christians. I know you're listening because a lot of us are taught that if you're a Christian and you're in ministry that you need to give, 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 give. Yeah. It's quite the opposite. I'm really glad we're talking about this because truly this is not something that is talked about. It's almost kind of like taboo or the word boundary almost has like a negative connotation to it where Mm -hmm. like if someone brings it up, you're like, but we really do need to normalize it Yeah, because it is so, it is so healthy that we know what we're able to handle. And I like how you mentioned season seasonally, like you're from season to season, you're in a different place. You may be able to take on more. You might be able to take on a little bit less and there's mm-hmm. no shame in that. Yeah. Um, but part, part of this is we need to know what we can handle and we need to be able to speak that out and let people know what our boundaries are if mm-hmm. they come close to them. Mm-hmm. And if somebody has a problem with one of the boundaries you set, then you know, it's a you problem and not a me problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really important to know too. We have to know what is ours, what is within our fence and what is in somebody else's fence because we aren't responsible for what is in somebody else's fence. So we need to really identify and it really comes back to like knowing about ourselves and then communicating that in a kind, loving oh, way. Absolutely. Because we don't want to be stone cold Christians like, no, you need to figure that out for yourself. We need to bring the wisdom down in a loving way, be like, scoop, scoop back into your fence. (laughs) Well, well, yeah. And like the, and there's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) Scoop, scoop back into (laughs) over there. Yeah. Yeah, But the point is being able to continue to be love, even when that, that boundary comes up. I mean, the thought, the story just came to mind of, and this may be me stretching a little bit, but being able to say no and knowing when there's like a line there. I mean, the example that came to mind right now for me is Jesus when he cast the demons Mm -hmm. out of that man and Mm -hmm. like sent them into the pigs that man wanted to follow Jesus and Jesus Mm -hmm. told him no oh really yes he did he told him now obviously Jesus like knew like you know what you need to go back uh like to the town you came Mm -hmm. from and like think about what he was going to be able to do in that town he was gonna bring it bring the story his testimony and would change lives so Jesus knew that but the man did he wanted to give up everything and follow Jesus and Jesus I mean, we could argue that's a boundary. He knew like, no, not right now. Mm -hmm. You, you got to go that way. Yeah. Bring what I just imparted to you to the people that need it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Jesus was able to say no, and we need to, but he did it in love. Like, you know, the guy didn't walk away and go like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like we need to be able to practice those boundaries in love um, so that people aren't getting hurt, Mm -hmm. but it's so important that we start doing this Mm -hmm. because otherwise, if we do not healthily draw the fence, if you will, if you don't draw your fence, you end up starting to carry a fence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, I did that. (laughs) That just came out of that on the fly, but it's so true. If you don't speak out like, Hey, I can't do this right now, or Mm -hmm. no, I don't appreciate this, that the person may continue to do that. It'll Mm -hmm. continue to poke you. Yeah. And then you end up carrying like a fence towards that person Yeah, when we should only be carrying love for other people. Right. Like we are, we aren't responsible for certain things and that's okay. And if we aren't able to say no to some of the external or internal pressures that we are feeling, then we have a lack of like self-control and then it becomes our problem. Like we're upset because somebody won't stop blowing up our phones, but (laughs) that's not their problem. It's your problem because you didn't teach them that they shouldn't have cross that line in a loving way. Oh, it's so tough because it's I'm very be tough. really real with you guys. I am the person that healthily knows not to cross other people's boundaries, but I don't draw my own. And so then people come like walking into my backyard type thing. Yeah. And it's because I'm like, oh, I don't want to hurt anyone. Right. But then it ends up being a me issue. Like clearly when you said right. that, I mean, I just got hit. Like, I, you know what? Maybe I don't have as much self-control as I think I do, you know, because I, I am not able to say Mm -hmm. no sometimes, Mm -hmm. but I've been starting to really practice Mm -hmm. that. And it's been wonderful being able to say like, no, Mm -hmm. you know what? I don't appreciate this Mm -hmm. or 
you know what? I don't think I'm the answer to this. What if you went and talked to this person? Yeah. You know, yeah. because sometimes there are seasons when a lot of people are going to start that looked like milking a cow but yeah, I know. <laughs> on your strings. and certain people, you know, like, yes, there's a grace for this right mm-hmm. now. And others, you know, like I can't take this yes, on. Yeah. And so once again, being able to draw that yeah. boundary and know yourself too. Mm-hmm. For example, I know for myself that I can struggle with anxiety when I feel overwhelmed. And then though it's nobody else's problem, but my own that I'm feeling overwhelmed, I then treat them poorly. So I need to be very good and very conscious about being like, I can't take on this extra thing, or I can't go to this event or this time frame isn't going to work out for me because then I know I'm not even going to be able to give of my best self. And it's actually not healthy for me mentally. It's not healthy for other people. I, the Lord doesn't want them to see me in that light. And so right. you, it's really getting to know yourself and like know and own what what is you just because Juliana might be able to stay up all night long and pray for people. That's wonderful. That might be what God called her to do. (laughs) And it sounds like everybody should do that. You know, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? No, I don't, God didn't call us all to be exactly like Juliana who will stay up all night and pray for you. (laughs) He didn't because we all have our different gifts and callings and we need to know that about ourselves to be able to then communicate that so we can operate out of our most healthy selves. It's like, when you say that, that's just so good Mm because you are no one else, but yourself and being able to know what you can and can't handle and what Mm -hmm. the Lord actually wants you to be able to handle that. Like, it's almost like an internal and external thing. Like Mm -hmm. you start having peace and knowing like, you know what, it's okay that I don't want to host this in my house. Maybe I'm not called to that. And that, and I, and just because I see other Christians doing it doesn't mean that that is for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do something else. That's more my gifting and finding peace in that, but then also being able, like an external thing, you're then able to interact with others that are doing that. And there's not like a, you know, a comparison piece, a bitter piece or anything like that. You know, it's like, Boundaries are so good. Yeah, it, it it's very helpful to know those things. I know that, and we're talking a lot to Christians because we, like Jesus was constantly giving them of himself and we are called to be like Christ. However, it's, it's murky waters because yes, that's true, but then it's like, okay, but how is this? That we're seeing so many Christians get burnt out completely. And I know that we had, um, Well, I'm I'm a clinical mental health counselor and I was trained that I was not to talk to my clients in the hallway or in the lobby before or after our sessions, because I was showing them when I would, that I was too available and that I wasn't respecting my own time. Mm. And it actually, and I thought, oh no, I'm just building rapport, but no, I was showing that I don't have respect for my office hours and for that hour that we had booked that I was getting paid to do a really heavy job. And so, but as a Christian, we aren't taught what's the official rules what of the job title. And it really just comes down to knowing ourselves. Who are you laughing at? Oh my word. Well, thank you, Danny. Nathan goes, Juliana, I'll start blowing up your phone for prayer. (laughs) Nathan, that was an exaggeration very much so, but I would love to pray for people, but I don't know about all night. (laughs) My word. But yeah, we have a lot of people interacting. Alice says boundaries are a must and they really are. And they're Mm. not talked about. I'm at the ripe age of almost 30. And we're, I'm just now learning how to help me live that out. You know, like, like it's come on. I should have known this so long because there are so many years I carried shame, yeah. guilt, and from comparing myself to others, yeah, feeling like a doormat, mm-hmm. you know. Man. And we aren't called to be people pleasers, no. and that is part of the <laughs> thing too. <laughs> <laughs> we aren't called to be people pleasers. We we are called to be like peacemakers, and you know, to help and edify the body of Christ. But oftentimes we get those lines really blurred. So we talked a lot about identity um, at the beginning of our, I don't even know the episode numbers, but when we first started it was the very beginning, I think mm-hmm. like episode one, two, and I three. encourage you to go back and listen to those because we talk about getting to know you and what makes you tick, what God called you for being confident in yourself, being confident to be able to establish those boundaries. And if 
Patty gets mad at you because you, I just made up a name, gets yeah. mad at you because you said you weren't going to go to lunch with her on Saturday because you would want to spend time with your family. Yeah. Then you would feel confident then hmm, she's got some issues you got to work out. <laughs> In a loving way, but like yeah. she doesn't understand boundaries. Yeah. And I, the thought just came to mind. I feel like that was a Holy Spirit thing, but Thank like you. when we're, when we lovingly draw that boundary, we're actually helping that person. <laughs> Colin says, dang it, Patty. I just yeah. came up. I was- but we are, we are helping that person because it almost starts <laughs> to bring an awareness because we all have different giftings. Like I would like to say that one of my giftings is I, I, I am very socially aware of that stuff. Like mm. I don't want to step on this person's toes by doing this or that. I want to mm. honor them in this way, but some people, and there's nothing against them. Cause then they have, they have giftings in other areas, but mm. some people don't, aren't as aware of stepping on people's toes or pulling on their strings. Yeah. You know, they just don't know it. And so by you actually drawing that boundary in a loving way, you are bringing an awareness to, Hey, I, I would like you to honor me in this way. And then they, it brings that awareness about, so they can start turning, like almost like turning on the light. Oh, you know, and now when I engage with this person, I'm going to have that in mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that when it helps them in their other relationships, it starts to bring about an awareness. So it really Mm -hmm. is a good thing. Melanie says awareness with without action is worthless and it is tough but it is so true you can be the most amazing person in the world but if you are not showing and respecting your own self and showing people teaching people how to talk to you then you're kind of going to slowly get pulled down and down and down and it actually makes your relationships this is something the lord is speaking to me about your relationships can only get better when you know each other's boundaries and you talk about them because then you're able to honor them and love them in like just the way they need Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like your relationships get better yeah when you set those boundaries it's really awesome yes (laughs) boundaries are good they're not there should not be no negative connotation only yeah connotations but i do have a question for you i'm gonna put you on the spot okay um (laughs) coming from a person who sometimes struggles telling others what my boundaries are Uh if someone is um stepping over my boundaries can you give an example of how i could lovingly like tell them give them or give me a can you give me so okay. this is a common one, Okay. but I and actually, no, I don't want to use this one because they're, they're okay. Um, <laughs> oh, this is a common one actually. So in this past season, mm-hmm. I had a newborn. She's mm-hmm. now a one-year-old is crazy. So she's technically not a newborn, but mm-hmm. when we were in that season, oh, yeah. I had a lot of people wanting to hang, reach out, text, hang out with me, wanted me to like go out to eat or this and that. And I mm. really felt like I was in a season where I need to be home with my baby. I need to be with my husband. Like this is yeah. a really formative, special time. And I felt so yucky. Cause I, it's like not nice to really say no to people. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I did end up like having to say no sometimes. And it was really uncomfortable. And I could mm. tell the person was like, people oh. were hurt. Yeah. So I, but I never brought up like, Hey, you, you need to stop. And it became a repetitive thing. Like, like people kept you know, asking yeah, yeah, you yeah. to do things. And I, so how could I have said that? Just, this is a random example. I but- think, I think by being super, super honest, I have, um, I have a friend who will ask me to do things. And sometimes I don't, the greatest reason why I can't do them. And I don't expect like with the baby situation, people who don't have babies don't realize a lot of times like that. It's like, no dude, I, my life's way different. And I, Mm -hmm. you, they just don't get it until they, yeah. So sometimes you have to be just so honest and be like, I'm really sorry, but I want to come really badly. But right now I realize that right now I just have, I have a lot going on and it has nothing to do with you, but I'm just going to need to step back. Um, and, but can I text you when a good time is because I do really want to see you. Okay. Like not, I feel like a lot of times, and I remember sitting and thinking about excuses I could come up with to not go to things (laughs) that were not lies, but they were excuses. And that was draining, but one, yeah, I'm sick. (laughs) but I have a friend now who will ask me to do things. And sometimes it's just, I just, 
I don't really want to. It's not, it has nothing to do with them. It's just not a great yeah. time, but I'm not actually so busy that I couldn't make it work. Yes. But I, I have this happen a lot. Yes. So but I, I do, I just say to, to this person and this person says to me the same thing. And I know this person wants to hang out with me too. So I don't take it personally, okay. but I say to her, to her, I say like, I'm really busy these next couple of weeks. I'm so sorry. Um, but I do want to hang out with you. Um, I'll text you when I free up a little bit more. And really that is legitimate. No one needs to know exactly what you're doing. If you need to not go to something because you need to take a hot bath tonight, then you don't, you, you don't, <laughs> you don't need to tell anybody what you're busy doing be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I have plans. And it's fine that your plans are to take a hot bath. Oh, you don't owe anybody an explanation. Come on, Daddy. All. she's no. on fire now. Like I can well, feel no, it. it's she's like, it's liberating because my plans might be, I have plans to sit on the couch with my husband and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And if people can't respect the fact that you have other plans other than them, then there's a them problem. And if they take it personally, after you're saying it's not you, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm busy, you know, then mm. that's them. If they're offended at that hundred percent them, you're not doing anything wrong by having other plans. Cause it's, you know, it's like self-care and it's, you need to take care of you first, but there is that line too, where you're like, all right, Danny, it's time to like hop out of the bathtub for real, like every night. And like, <laughs> you need to start engaging with other people. And that's part of being healthy too, and learning yourself. But I feel like we have less of a problem with that in the church and more of a problem with being feeling like it's okay to say no because then you get drained and then for years you might not leave the bathtub (laughs) (laughs) yes we it's seriously I know this is a big problem and I and I say with Christian people because people will then tell you well I thought that like you wanted to minister in this way and it's like well, I do, but not at 12 o'clock at night, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I like babysitting, but I don't want to babysit this woman's kids for six hours for free. Not you, but I'm just like, a random, this, this one, yeah, this one, which one, which yeah. one? <laughs> and, yeah, we just don't really know. And it's respected. And if people are offended, then that's them, but it's so liberating for me. I know now when I am able to draw that boundary and say, I'm, I'm busy right now. It's so liberating mm-hmm. to be like, ah, and if people have a problem with it, I know it's not, I don't take on their guilt because no. I'm like, I, I just know myself. You let I know that what. stay outside your fence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause you can only control what you own and yeah. I don't own their offense. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. So it sounds like you're very knowledgeable on this topic. I'm setting you up. Cause I know you've read some, oh, this is a long time ago. It's okay. Do you like recommend this ago. resource? Oh yeah. Um, my cousin, Noelle, Noelle, she just read it and posted it on my personal page. It's called Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud. And my mom read this book and loves it. It's really good. It is very liberating. I think it is a Christian book. It is, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just for Christians. I think anybody I mean, it's just reads ha- it. healthy for any relationship. And right. another one would be I think Havla Cunnington um, from Bethel also is, she just wrote a book about boundaries herself Mm -hmm. um, because it is, yeah. And she comes from the church. So Mm. she's really taking that, that I think that perspective and it, but it's so important. It's something that's not talked about, but remember like the, the best relationships are ones where the people know the people in the relationship know and honor one another's Mm -hmm. boundaries yes yeah well I think this is a good I know that we just wanted to jump on really fast to share with you this topic because it has come up a lot this Mm -hmm. week too Mm -hmm. this week in the last few weeks Mm -hmm. um it's just something the Lord's been speaking to us about and we just Mm -hmm. wanted to share Mm -hmm. what we've heard and like how it's impacting us and it is it is liberating I keep seeing that word showing up yeah liberating liberating. yeah it just feels so like oh man what a weight off when you finally get it and you can start practicing it in a Mm -hmm. loving way just like Jesus did yeah yeah you're like I'm free free. and the goal is that we look at the end of the race we look just like Jesus heck I'd Mm -hmm. like to look like Jesus by age like 31 yeah (laughs) I'm sure before Jesus was Thirty, he took plenty of baths. <laughs> yeah, he kidding. knew he needed his bath time and his time with the Lord. You know. Yeah. All righty. All right. Guys. Well, do we want to close in prayer really quick? Yeah. I just 
Okay. Uh, I got the sense while we're talking, I started to get a little bit of like anxiety. So I'm going to just pray and, um, Lord, we just thank you that you are the ultimate example of how we are supposed to live. And we just thank you for Jesus who walked in perfect peace and love, but he also was able to practice healthy boundaries where he was able to show others how much he loved them by putting Mm -hmm. those boundaries in place, Lord. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we pray that whoever is listening, that this would just land right in their heart, Lord, and they would know that saying no is okay. Mm -hmm. And there is no shame in telling people no or extending a yes, Mm -hmm. Lord. And there's no shame in that. And so we just break off any anxiety any anxiety that comes from people pleasing, we just mm-hmm. break it off in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And we replace it. Holy spirit. We ask that you replace it with your peace and your comfort and mm-hmm. knowing that you created them just how they're supposed to be created. And it doesn't need to look like anyone else's fence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your back air doesn't yes. need to look like anyone else's. <laughs> and that you would just give them peace and knowing what, where their boundary lines are mm-hmm. and peace and knowing how to cl- explain their boundaries to others. Mm-hmm. So we just thank you. Lord, we ask that you would help us to n- know what it is that pleases you and then give us the ability to be able to focus on only pleasing you and not pleasing others. So Lord, we also ask that you would please just help us to balance the things that you have called us to do and you highlight those in our hearts Um, so that we know what to say yes to and what to say no to um, and what's okay and what's not. And um, Lord, that you would just, yeah, like I said, highlight those things that you have called us to do and to say yes to um, so that we can feel a peace about saying no a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, And we just pray that we are able to honor you with our time Um, honor you with the way that we serve others. And we thank you, Lord, for for giving us others to share in community with and teach us how to share um, properly and and most healthy with other people and to give of ourselves the way that you gave of yourself, but while still being full ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We hope you have a wonderful evening and a happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Bye. Bye.